Hi, good evening. Tonight we're going to take a look at a counter-attacking session that will last approximately 90 minutes. Um, we're going to take a look at the objectives here in black, the overall objectives of the session. So the main objective is to improve the ability of individual players, uh, small groups and team units to do these three things. So just to clarify, that's obviously players working individually. Small groups, that doesn't mean a back four, for example, or a midfield four, again, for example. That could be perhaps a right back working alongside a right midfielder. That is what I mean by a small group, could be two or three players, and team units. That's where we're looking at a defensive unit, a midfield unit, and an attacking unit. And we're trying to improve three things. Number one, uh, we're trying to force and create opportunities to win the ball back from the opposition, obviously, and counter. Secondly, to counter-attack quickly, decisively, and break opposition lines of defence. And thirdly, to select the most penetrative or effective form of counter-attack. That could be uh, a pass or a dribble. So just to give a little bit more detail about what we mean here. Um, there's no such thing as a counter-attack unless we won the ball back. Okay, The whole idea of a counter-attack involves winning possession from the opposition and then starting your own attack. So one of the major main skills in counter-attacking is setting traps, pressing uh, the opposition so that we can win the ball back and then launch an attack. Now there's a balance. Um, some coaches use a sort of six second rule, which basically means after six seconds, a counter-attack is no longer a counter-attack. There comes a period of time when the team in possession, if they've had possession for seven, eight, nine passes, maybe even 15 or 20 seconds, they are in possession. They are building an attack, but they're no longer building a counter-attack. And part of that uh, distinction is to do with the opposition. So when uh, the opposition are back in defensive balance and reorganised, uh, the counter-attack is, is no longer. Secondly, the counter-attack must be quick, decisive and break lines. Again, if we're, talk if we're using six seconds as a rule, um, the moment the, the, the counter-attack goes beyond that period of time, or also it can be to do with the direction of the attack. Ideally, we want to keep a counter-attack moving forward from pass to pass to pass. If it starts to go backwards or sideways, momentum is lost. And again, that balance between counter-attack um, and attack or in possession and building attack is, is gone. Um, and thirdly, if we are going to do it quickly, we need to penetrate opposition lines. And that involves choices. Um, is a dribble the most effective way to launch the counter-attack or continue the counter-attack? Is it a pass? Now, obviously, if we're counter-attacking and we win possession back in the final third, um, there may not even be a need for a pass or a dribble. The counter-attack could start with a shot on goal. So if we look now at the four main activities, we're starting here with a warm-up. Now, in any good session, the warm-up should, uh, should be linked to uh, the, the skills that we are developing for the session. So if we, if we look at it here, here's the main playing area, and there are four scoring boxes uh, in the area. One at the top, one at the bottom, and two at the side. Now there's a total of 18 players uh, within the square, and they're divided into uh, three, three small matches. Um, we've got a 4v2, a 4v2, and a 4v2. Now in this session, uh, the coach should be working with the red team. They are the counter-attacking team. So although there are 18 players inside the square, the, 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 t the teams are competing in mini matches, 4v2 uh, times three. So the blues are starting in possession and the reds are trying to win the ball back and counter-attack. Now the blue team can move anywhere inside the square, obviously being vigilant and watching out for the other matches that are going on. So it's gonna be quite a hectic area in some ways, even though the matches are individual. Um, and they all score a point if they complete six passes. So the four blues here, for example, if they can complete six passes without the two reds winning the ball back, they win a point. Um, the red team score by winning possession back 
and either dribbling into any of these four boxes or passing to uh, their teammate inside one of those boxes. So one team is trying to keep possession. The red team is trying to win the ball back as quickly as possible and, uh, and score in one of those boxes. Now, because it's quite a large area, uh, the challenges for the counter-attacking team will be as follows. If we're looking at these four players, now they're probably going to be relatively compact because if they scatter too much, A, there's other bodies around from other groups that will confuse the issue, and it's quite a big area to pass across, so there's a high risk that they may lose possession. So they may well be working in a smaller area. So what the two need to try and do is to, within that area, set a trap. If we're looking at this as a starting position for these two reds here, they may want to try and force play one way uh, so that if they win the ball back, they're close to one of the score boxes. So these two, these two here might try and press uh, and win the ball back just in this section of the pitch. If the blue team spread out and move into this area of the pitch, they may try and corner them off before they win the ball. So intelligent pressing which would allow them to quickly break into the nearest um, score box. The way we progress this activity is by going into two 6-3-3 matches. So we'd be uh, two teams of six blues and two teams of red threes. So now we are counter-attacking as a three, but they're, try they're trying to do it against six players now. So obviously the challenge is, is still quite high. And what we're looking at there is, how can they create opportunities to win the ball back? That might be making play predictable. And obviously the need to counter-attack is going to be a quick one because they are outnumbered. If they don't do it quickly, the blue team will quickly win back possession. So moving on to our skill practice, which will last approximately 20 minutes. We have a square here with four scoring corners. So the, cone, uh, the cones could be marked out by the coach to, to indicate scoring areas. Now we've got um, two blues who are working with these four uh, black players here. We've got four red players here. Again, we are coaching and working with the four red players. So basically it's these two blues working with the black players to make a six. The blues must stay in the area. The black players must stay around the outside of the area. The reds must also work inside, okay? So these blue players, can keep possession amongst themselves. But obviously, because they're outnumbered, it's gonna be quite hard for them to build an attack two against four. So any time they want, they can pass out to one of the black players, receive it back. Perhaps play a one, two, and go out and play the other way. Um, and the players on the outside have two touches maximum. So that's basically one touch and play in, so they can't dwell on the ball. Uh, the blues and the blacks combined, six passes for a goal. And much like the first activity, the red team, if they win possession back, what they need to do is either dribble into or pass to a teammate inside um, one of the one of the square uh, one of the corners here. Now, one of the challenges for the the red team is, is what they do about uh, controlling space to win to win the ball back and launch a counter. In here, they have a numerical advantage, so they want to be looking at um, if they can't win the ball back quickly, at least stopping opportunities to play out. So they might try and circle or, you know, make out a square shape around the blues so that they're making opportunities to play out difficult. Now, obviously, if they can suffocate the blues, the blues will be stuck and then the reds have the opportunity to press. So by making it hard to play out, the reds create opportunities to press. If there's opportunities to press, you can win the ball back. And then, We've got a 4v2 in here, so there should be quite a high success rate once the four reds have won the ball back that they can break into the corners. Their biggest challenge is going to be when they are split. And if one of the blue players plays out here, how do the reds handle it? Because they're going to need to apply some pressure to this player on the ball. But if there's too much, perhaps if two players, for example, are trying to be too clever and stopping the pass back in, it gives these two blues here an opportunity again to dominate in here. So what is particularly um, pertinent here is creating the opportunities to, to win the ball back. Uh, I think the red team will have more success of actually launching a counter-attack in this activity than this one. But the real challenge here is 
How do we start the counter-attack? And that comes from individual players making good decisions about when to press. Um, small groups, it could be these two working together. And also how they operate as a unit to stop balls out and force opportunities to win the ball back. So we're just going to go on to the third activity now. If I just turn uh, the board over and get it balanced. <clears throat> okay, so we are now moving into um, another skill practice, um, a slightly more advanced skill practice, and it's leading into a, a small sided game. So you might call this like a, a link practice, okay? So what we're looking at now is we're working in a bigger area, 50 yards uh, long approximately and 30 yards wide. So again, we are coaching the red team to, to counter attack. So in this half here, we've got a blue goalkeeper, supply of footballs, and they're gonna start the attack. They have an overload of four blues versus two reds in this half, and we have a 2v2 balance here, okay? So the goalkeeper starts the attack with a rollout or a pass out to any of these blue defenders. So if the player, the goalkeeper has rolled it out to this blue, what they're trying to do is the blue team are trying to break into, uh, are trying to break into this half. Two players will break in. So for example, if the pass out is here and this player has managed to dribble across, he joins in as the third player and a supporting player makes a supporting player run. So it's now 4v2 here. So it's gone from a 4v2 overload here to a 4v2 overload here. So they obviously try and score past the red goalkeeper. Once the attack is over, uh, they will be 4v2 here because that's how the, uh, the attack finished. The red goalkeeper will, will play out and it will be four blues versus uh, two reds. And again, the same principle. They're trying to get two players to go uh, across. Now, what the red team are trying to do in either half, they're going to be outnumbered uh, by four to two. They're trying to win the ball back and score in that half of the pitch. So if the reds, for example, stop the attack here, they're trying to score past the blue goalkeeper here. If they stop the attack here, they can score uh, in, in this goal here. You can, you can progress that activity and make it more challenging for the Reds later on in terms of counter-attacking by wherever they win the ball, they have to score in the opposition half. So if the Reds win the ball here, they then have to attack this way. So that's where we're looking at. They're breaking more lines and the, the counter-attack is over a prolonged, prolonged period of time. They've got to build up more progressively, but that can be introduced um, later on. So what we're looking at here is when the red team managed to win the ball back, can they counter, uh, can they counter attack quickly? Okay. Because if we've got a 4v2 here, if the reds win the ball, they are still outnumbered. There's a high chance that the blues can, can get back, win possession and then continue their own attack. So if this red player here wins the ball, for example, uh, he or she needs to quickly transfer the ball across here because then there's a 2v2. And when there's a 2v2, again, if these players can play quickly, there's a good chance that they might get an attempt on goal. The longer the attack takes, it's going to be harder to play out and launch the counter attack. And the longer it takes for the two players to combine here, the blue players are going to become defensively balanced, perhaps make play predictable and make the attack predictable and what we're looking at here is these players really need to think about what's the most effective way of launching the counter-attack that obviously depends on where the blue players are when they lose the ball it depends on the position of their red teammates when when they get the ball uh, it might be a long pass it might be a short pass they may need to combine with a quick one two before there's actually an opportunity to transfer the ball forward now the coach can experiment a bit here they may want to at first say the red players, if they win the ball here, have to stay in their zones. So it's two and two. Or they might want to say, OK, well, the person who either passes across or dribbles across joins in. And then there's a 3v2 attacking overload to, for the coach to experiment with. Maybe one of the blue defenders can, can come back. So it's a 3v3 balance in the final zone. So that's something for the coach, uh, for the coach to play with. And then finally... Um, we're going into uh, an 8v8 small-sided game. So I would recommend putting both teams into a 2-3-2 formation 
uh, with a goalkeeper. They attack opposite ends, obviously. And we've got a starting position here. The whole point of the starting position, uh, it gives an opportunity for the coach to, to reset and from start, from back to front to go over the, the principles of how, how, we, how we'd launch a counter-attack. So it's, it's a forced scenario. If we're looking at a 2-3-2 a two, two, from the Reds' point of view, they're going this way. There are their two defenders. Uh, here are their midfielders, a supporting attacker, a right midfielder, a left midfielder, in a bit of a deep position. And here are the two red attackers. Now, this red attacker um, deliberately hits the ball for the goalkeeper to catch. And then the Blues launch an attack. So now the red team are out of possession and we go from how do they win the ball and launch the counter-attack. And this is where the coach can talk about uh, defensive principles of, of play and also bring in uh, principles of pressing here. So when the goalkeeper has the ball, how do the front two start the press? Uh, how do the midfield three join in and support the press? How do the back two um, also affect the press? So that restart allows us to go from, in this case, front to back. What do these two players do out of possession to win the ball and launch a counter-attack? What do these three midfielders do to join in to, to win the ball, which then launches the counter-attack, okay? So what we're looking at there is um, individual press, small unit press, whole team press, countering quickly, breaking lines, and what is the most effective way to, to counter-attack? Is it a dribble? Is it a pass? Is it a shot? Now, these are all, the without a fluid picture, without analysing a game, uh, it's very difficult to, to, to explain. But what I, mean, what I mean as an example, and I really like this point here, if, for example, uh, we start here, red player uh, gives the ball to the goalkeeper, the two defenders split, the goalkeeper tries to roll the ball out to one of them, but the nearest red attacker wins the ball straight away. Now, if they win the ball straight away here, may not be a need to pass. It might be a quick dribble and a shot. It might even be a first time shot. If we win the ball back here, again, it's very unrealistic, even a 70 yard pitch that you're gonna shoot first time. Um, dribbling out from the back might be a bit risky. So realistically here, it might be a, a quick pass. But again, where would that pass go? We're trying to break lines. So if our red defender here wins the ball, okay, it's unlikely we're going to go sideways. It's a bit risky, but we're not breaking lines. That relies on attacking principles coming in. So we're going to need the wide players to disperse. We're going to need the, the red strikers to split. And this red midfielder here becomes very, very important in being the link player from defence to attack. And so, as again, if we were talking about the start, how do we, uh, how do we launch the counter-attack? It comes from, a lot of it is successful, successful pressing. So this topic is defensive and attacking. I know it says counter-attacking, but just remember as coaches, we have to win the ball back. Okay, we can't have a counter-attack if you're starting in possession. So immediately in this practice, I know it's forced, but we give possession, on, we give possession away. So as coaches, individual press, well, that's important sometimes, but if it's, done, if it's done properly, you shouldn't have an individual pressing for too long. It's difficult to, to maintain that. So an individual press is the starting point for smaller units to join in. Uh, and then smaller units is an invitation for team units to join in and then for the whole team uh, to put it together. Also, the area is quite a good one whilst you're still embedding it with your players. Is 70 by 50 so that's enough space to actually go from defense to midfield to attack but it's not so challenging as it would be in an 11 a side where there's a huge amount of area to cover um if you liked this discussion about counter-attacking um i'm rob ellis and i'm the author of this book the soccer coaches toolkit uh, more than 250 activities to inspire and challenge players. Um, in each section of the book, you will find 10, 15, 20 ideas to coach the main techniques of football from long passing to short passing, to heading, to volume, to dribbling, to running with the ball. You will also find um, uh, an attacking and defending section, which I think is very important for coaches. It's all related to 
how do we attack, how do we defend, and can we coach that within the same activity, which can be challenging. And there's also a tactical section where we'll discuss things like counter-attacking, pressing, defending in wide areas, and, and so on and so on. So if you're interested, I highly recommend uh, the book. It's available to buy online uh, at all good bookshops online. And if you do uh, buy a copy, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you use it in your coaching practice. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, as I say, if you like the video, please leave some positive comments. Always appreciated. Thank you.